more popular, the President of the United States or the crack-smoking mayor of Toronto, Rob Ford? They wanted to get rid of this guy. They tried to get rid of this guy. They made fun of this guy. They laughed at this guy. They were all over this guy. They quit. And his approval numbers are back up to 47% in Toronto. And his approval numbers are higher than Obama's. The smack, uh, the crack smoking mayor of Toronto's approval numbers are higher than Obama's. All oh, right, yes, he is. It is true. A recent poll of Canadians show crack smoking mayor Rob Ford's approval rating has rebounded to 47%. And now the latest Gallup poll shows President Obama's approval rating, well, a mere 41%. Ouch. So why is President Obama less popular than a crack smoking mayor? Well, we can't explain Canada, but we can tell you about President Obama and his low approval rating. It's all right in the president's last State of the Union address. Flashback to the promises. First, the big raise promise. The president promising to raise the minimum wage in stages over the next few years. Also, the promise about keeping jobs in America. A big promise to wipe out tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas. Plus, the promise about stricter gun control. An assault weapons ban and background checks for all firearm purchases, all on the agenda. And he also promised immigration reform. So how many of these State of the Union promises did President Obama keep? Zero. And if he had kept some of them, would his numbers be any better or might they be worse? Carl Rove joins us. Good evening, Carl. Good evening, Greta. Carl, there's just something about being below, having your approval range below Rob Ford. I don't know. It's just, that's just not the place where I'd want to be. Boy, uh, you'd expect the people of Toronto would have lower expectations for their mayor, but apparently he's he's meeting and exceeding the expectations of nearly half the people in the in the in the city. You know, you look at the promises that the president made at the State of the Union. We obviously went back through the speech, and you know, jobs. We you know the things that he promised, it didn't happen. You know, the things that the tax mm -hmm. the tax reform that he was going to implement didn't happen. Yeah, you need to look at the president's uh, State of the Union address last year in a broader context because it was preceded by a couple of weeks by his inaugural address, his second inaugural address. And it's really instructive. First of all, you got to you got to take all the promises into into uh, consideration. In the inaugural address, he spent most of his time talking about climate change. In fact, he devoted three sentences of 45 words to the economy and one sentence uh, of 19 words to deficit reduction and then 155 words into how entitlements were going were going to be cut the principal focus was climate change the secondary focus was what he called the, gener the this generation's tasks equal pay for women gay marriage an end to voter id laws immigration reform and gun control and you're right so you take the, the promises in the State of the Union address and combine them with the promises in the inaugural address, which are at odds. I mean, in the inaugural address, he didn't pay any attention to the economy. By the time he spoke to the State of the Union a few weeks later, the criticism had been so high that the president devoted most of it to the economy. Most of it, however, was just language. As you say, we're going to do something about raising the minimum wage to nine dollars. And now he's saying raise it to ten. I guess every year you need to raise it a dollar. Uh, 15 met global centers for manufacturing. He's now got one of them in North Carolina. Uh, Fix It First, a fund for transportation and infrastructure improvements. $50 billion never happened. Re the project rebuild, $15 billion to tear down buildings and, and uh, clean up uh, inner cities. No, it didn't happen. Wind, solar, geothermal, uh, additional subsidies didn't happen. Research into different kinds of ways to fuel cars, a new mortgage program, a brain map which he talked about in the State of the Union, and then pre-kindergarten for every low and moderate income child in America, which he costed out, didn't cost out in his speech, but what it might have been as much as $100 billion a year. You know, virtually all of these did not happen. The ones that did are just itsy-bitsy tiny things. Well, you know the thing that served, I mean, look, there's no doubt about it, he has opposition, but every president practically has opposition, you know, at some point in, in his, his term. I mean, I mean, that's sort of the challenge. You know, we elect people to, to work with the opposition, to overcome the opposition, to lead. You know, and so how does he possibly go into this State of the Union with, when looking back at last year's State of the Union, having made all these promises? Does he repeat the same ones and hope for a better year, or does he come up with different ones? 
Well, I think he comes up with new ones and has as much success in getting them done as he did last year. Remember, his problem is not just in 2013. His problem is 2012. He ran for re-election not by articulating a positive and optimistic agenda for the future, not by trying to bring the country together, not by extolling what it was that he was going to do, but instead by basically trashing his hapless opponent, Mitt Romney. So he came into the to, the, to his second term with relatively low uh, approval ratings. Remember, a year ago he was at 52 percent approval after winning re-election, but basically slightly the same, roughly the same percentage that he got for his re-election, just a little bit more. That's not normal. And then he conducted himself in a very partisan fashion. Remember, just before his uh, a speech, his State of the Union speech, his communications director tweeted out, Dan Pfeiffer, who's still there, uh, tweeted out a message saying that the president had neither had a political opposition, was not worthy of the country. I mean, basically calling the Republicans un-American. And he has done nothing since then, or very little since then, uh, to, to help heal those wounds and act in a bipartisan fashion. In fact, the one thing that might get done if it, that, that's on his list, immigration reform, will get done only if he is not anywhere around the issue because the trust level in him and his people is so low, Republicans are going to be not inclined to try and cut, cut a deal with uh, the, the administration. They might be in, inclined to try and find a way to solve this problem by working with their Democratic congressional colleagues, but not the administration. Well, I also thought sort of the, the critical leadership failure was in the first week or two when he became president, 09, when he said to his opponent that he had won and that they essentially could right. do our way. Is that, you know, I thought to myself at the time, that is like the worst thing you want to do if you're trying to sort of reach across the aisle and try to massage your opponent into going your way is to start out by saying, tough luck, you, I won, you're out. Yeah. Well, and it wasn't just I won. It was like, shut up, because I won, and I'm not going to pay any attention to your ideas. And the president needs to establish a tone. He did it on on, on uh, the uh, the same on uh, health care reform. He, uh, in February of 2009, said to the Republicans, I'm going to make this a big issue. And the next time he talked to him was 51 weeks later. We invited the Republican leadership over to the Blair House and in front of television cameras tried to bludgeon them into voting for a bill that they had no input on and serious doubts about. Look, the president, it, unlike most presidents who tend to learn things over the course of their time in office, this president, when it comes to dealing with his political opposition, seems to have learned very little about how to get committed. Uh, look, in 2005, Bush, who'd had a very tough re-election battle and, and was in the midst of an unpopular war, nonetheless got a major piece of energy legislation approved and reauthorization of the uh, of the uh, of, of the Patriot Act and, and and worked with Democrats and Republicans alike on immigration reform because he was working across party lines and was trying to achieve big things for the country. This president finds it very hard to do anything except berate his up political opposition and ignore his political supporters in the Congress. All right, let me ask you then about the Tea Party news. We now know that Senator Mike Lee will deliver the Tea Party response to President Obama's State of the Union address next week. Now, in 2011, the Tea Party started giving its own response, starting with that uh, was starting with Re Representative Michelle Bachman. She gave the first one. The following year, Herman Cain gave one, and Senator Rand Paul have all given Tea Party responses. Carl, um, is there a schism or a problem within the Republican Party because we're going to have a Republican Party response and we're going to have a Tea Party response? Uh, look, I think that's fine. Uh, remember, this is this is not quote the Tea Party. This is the Tea Party Express, one uh, group among several different national groups. It's not. This is not a consent necessarily a consensus of all the major Tea Party groups. Tea Party tends to be very decentralized and very localized. But there are four or five national groups that have sort of put themselves on the on the on the landscape, and this is the selection of one. But no, I don't look. I don't think to the degree that it gets attention. It's it gets attention to a healthy new strain in American politics. And I think that's productive. I said last year that it, that uh, you know I thought uh, that it was very smart to put forward Rand Paul, who's a different thinker. He's got an out of the box way of looking at things, and is a very uh, strong proponent of a of a new approach. And I think that's healthy for political parties. You cannot stagnate. You got to continue to look for new answers, new ideas, new blood, new leadership, and uh, that's but, a healthy but thing. But it does say. But it does say, okay, that it does say the Republican Party has given its response, and Tea Party is saying, well, we don't quite agree, so we have our own response. And typically, you think that's of Tea Party fine. voters as being, a, you know, a division of the Republican Party. Well, it's not going to be fine come election time if if, uh, well, if the two are at odds with each other. Well, two 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 things. One is, 
is most Tea Party members that I come to would bridle at the suggestion that they're an adjunct to the Republican Party. They want to keep the feet of people in both parties to the flames on big issues that they care about. And the second issue is, is that a lot of Tea Party members, at the end of the day, will find themselves far more in agreement with the Republican candidate in their district or state than with the Democratic candidate. And that's what it's all about. We saw that in 2010. We saw it again in 2012 when self-identified Tea Party members and people who uh, are not Tea Party members but identify with the movement or support the movement or applaud the movement voted overwhelmingly for Republican candidates. And I think we're likely to see that again this year because on the big issues, are you in favor of Obamacare or you want to repeal and replace it? Are you concerned about the deficit and debt and do you want to do something to rein in government spending, particularly entitlements? There's, no, there, there's, there, there's very little difference between most Tea Party members and most Republicans and a lot of difference between the, those two groups and the Democrats. Carl, thank you. Always nice to see you. Straight ahead, Sean Hannity has a message for Governor Andrew Cuomo. Hannity says he can't wait to get out of New York, and he's here to tell you all about it. That's next.